Hello everyone and welcome to this match of the Roulette League, a Division 1 Week 5 Round 10 match between 3-time Roulette Champion Janini and the 2021 World Champion Danny Buzia. This is now undoubtedly the second half of the competition, although very early on. This is the week 6 of the scheduled 9, of course delays are still possible, uh, we'll get there in August, but the I just checked the, the announcements and this event, this uh, league started more than a month ago now, on the 20th of June, so definitely lots of happenings so far and uh, all these matches and we get a new map since then and the items and whatnot. So obviously uh, a long long project which is now in the second half of the first season of hopefully many, which means that of course we are slowly start to think about uh, well, for all divisions, who, has, who is going to promote and relegate, but for Division 1 in particular, who will be the champion, and which three players will have to face elimination, or at least the relegation playoffs come uh, late August or September. Two maps are on offer, as usual. Uh, Janine has picked Berlin, and Zani Buta has, play, has chosen New York, which will be the second map, of course. Just these two maps, and whoever wins both, we'll earn 3 points for the league, and if we end up with a tie, then it is uh, 1 point each. First spin is here, Kitchen Knife Club Crew, Assault Rifle Suit, Fire DJ, SMG Rolf Hirschmuller, and Falling Object Club Security. Suit spin, very important to see or say. Can I have a game sound from someone, anyone? Yanni is the lucky person today with a very low background noise, hopefully. Manageable though. Suit spin very important, the fire is always fancy to see, and as DJ, which is a downstairs disguise, uh, we make the spin a quite a bit longer than probably the top uh, spins would be, or this wouldn't be the situation where we'd see sub fives or, or the swords. On the other hand, SMG Rolf is a nice combo, SMG so easy to find. Uh, many silence one basically from all agents, a falling object club security, can even be a 45 second kill, we'll see from Danny if that's possible or if he's going for that even. And then just middle of the road spins with the AR suit, which is technically not low that restriction, but you would probably rather take a silenced one than steal a loud one from the biker compound. Uh, just talking about these kills brought us to the second mid of the spin already, 40 seconds in for both players. Yanni changing into club security and looking for that falling object, the bricks will be dropped on Agent Davenport. First shot is a miss, but the second one is a flawless first kill of this match. But by the time I finish saying that, I think Danny has also uh, did that kill. No, he did the assault cipher kill. And Danny is going to be just a bit uh, late for falling object Davenport. But it's not the hardest kill there. Uh, Lots of ways to back the falling object kill. Banner will be uh, of utmost importance for both players. Yanni with the banner lord. Danny has initiated it at least 15 seconds ago. So now we'll see the KO. And uh, Danny has paused now. Now I, I didn't see on Danny's side. I think he wasn't expecting it exactly this way or Perhaps Banner could have been the Assault Rifle, assault rifle kill and uh, agreeing for another kill, but so far so good and Yanni also gets the KO. No immediate kill here, but Kitchen Knife and Club Crew disguise are not so far away, so we could see agent number one or the kill number one be on this agent. Danny after leaving Davenport up, opted for the 2 minute isolation near the biker compound. Uh, hard to say which kill that would be at current time because falling object is a bit far away from here. There are still the cranes. And Agent Thames is awaiting the, his demise, most likely, at least for one player. 
that should be done because Yanni already got the falling object kill and with two out of five that should be I would say a side a soul try for suit I'm not exactly sure Danny back down to the basement DJ and Rolf are waiting him downstairs but not the fire kill he can get the SMG down there quick enough then he has to be careful as Yanni gets spotted the body was just in no this was an unconscious witness just checking the replay that biker turned around at the last second before the double isolation and uh which would have made the fire kill so much easier for yanni but this will be a restart now and a three minute lead for danny one kill so far and danny is preparing his his next kill which is hard to say because smg and ar both possible to do silently but the way he's dragging it next to this dump he might just steal a weapon from these NPCs alternatively because I think this might just be the silenced SMG kill I think Danny just wants to get rid of all these bodies and not take care of the two bikers which will be a problem if left alone Danny quite a situation here because the biker reacted and Tony has to restart as well because of the head turn. He was boxed in by Rolf and the biker and I don't really have ever seen that throw not be reacted by Rolf but of course if the door is open then I can see that happen. So now Yanni with a minute lead which is two very fast kills. FO security and the soul drive suit no doubt those are the two and now the second uh, fire isolation of sorts but it will take a bit because Lowenthal's cycle is bringing him to the other end of the compound let's see if Donny can get the two quick kills 30 seconds in there's the suit kill changing into club security he can get the falling object anytime he wants well after the 45 second mark but Donny seemed uh, set on not using that kill so we see if that actually happens Wants to have some separation on Banner, or between Banner and uh, Montgomery. And there's the Banner lure, no falling object for Danny as well in his second run. I think the third and last KO, no, I think I see it, still see a dot on the minimap. Okay, so just one KO then. Mm. And the screwdriver to puncture this oil drum will be the setup for the fire kill and of course the DJ this guy is nowhere near so it has to be a remote one he's looking for those two final KOs first on the non-target almost said civilian but of course the biker is anything but and secondly on Lovental himself and the drag to the corner should do it. The body found could have resulted in some question marks if there's an exclamation from, from uh, Lowenthal, but that's not the case and the situation is still contained. Yanni setting up the third kill now, Danny with the second isolation. So if we were to suggest that Danny's strategy stays the same, I think it was really going to be the SMG as Rolf uh, for Montgomery downstairs, which uh, which leaves Davenport as kitchen knife club crew because fire and the falling object are not viable from that position. Of course, at least one biker kill is guaranteed with the, with the fire, which can be the incinerator as well, but it still just means that Lowenthal will have to burn to death and with the different cycles now Montgomery is not here basically for Danny and now with the door closed that has to be the isolation turns into peekaboo all planned there and he will get the next disguise as Yanni kitchen knife club crew is on 3 out of 5 now just 4 minutes into the run fire kill set up and time for the two downstairs kills. Get Rolf 
get anyone downstairs, of course Chamberlain or Montgomery come to mind. Take a DJ, which is not an issue lately because you can just go through the booth or go to the booth from both sides and take a disguise, detonate and exit, which should be Yanni's uh, exit strategy and just a couple minutes away from finishing. Definitely faster than Danny on his second try. And uh, suppose it will be the SMG kill for Davenport. And now Danny is on two out of five, but no fire set up. Falling object can still be a quick one. Banner also on the uh, stairs, so lots to consider here. As Yanni has troubles with this isolation, he still have those two quick KOs. <laughs> but Rolf turns around in time. I don't even know what went wrong with that isolation. If it's it's not the most precise throw and Rolf really does go for it most of the time. So the fact that another biker went for it and then Rolf was still in the situation still in still near the actual happenings, so like the two NPCs to take care of. It's a quite rare situation which I'm not sure if I've seen before. Which means uh, now, of course, Dani with a huge lead. Yanni a really quick strategy and can finish in 6-7 minutes, but Dani is arguably closer to finishing with 2 out of 5 kills and setting up the falling object on Thames. Yanni will kick the bricks this time, but that's apparently <laughs> seen by the other guard on the, f uh, on the rooftop. Yanni didn't want to use uh, either the assault rifle or the SMG. And that cost him another restart, so now 5 minute lead for Dani. And just 2 kills to go. Obviously Fire DJ being one of them. And then I still think that Kitchen Knife Club crew will be the other. And even although the kill count will somewhat even up, even out. Vidiani getting the falling object again now. It's 3 to 2, but lots more progress on Danny's side. If Danny can get this fire kill set up or just done. And then of course that's basically the map for him, but even without that it will be uh, his map to lose at this point. Danny, uh, <laughs> there's the Danny and there's the Yanni, but this time Yanni gets caught on cameras and we set him back a bit more. Uh, but Yanni during his run will be down in the basement of course, so at the longest detour there. Donny also trying remote isolation or no also the the kill is remote, the isolation is of course not. And then the plan is to exit down as DJ. Which is a bit of a running steal for Danny. But it's current just tense for him because his first proper run, three out of five kills, seven minutes in, was of progress there. And the fire will be done at another day. As uh, <laughs> quite fascinating. Uh, Danny's losing the assault rifle, but got the suit kill already, so no problems there. And before that fateful last kill, he will get kitchen knife as club crew and go down to get the DJ disguise. Yanni will have the setup at 3 minutes 
and then kitchen knife club crew isolation we've seen before four minutes before four minutes will pass and we'll have three out of five kills and everything upstairs secured with the fire uh, set up remotely i didn't see the taser put in the puddle uh, but should just be a formality we'll have to check his inventory the next time and i saw the detonator so obviously Yanni was on top of things there as Yanni get uh, as Danny oh my goodness uh, punk is right it's a uh, it's a nightmare to cast this one with the uh, Danini Yanini couple but Danny with the final disguise and uh, air quotes just the fire kill remaining there's a way to make it half a step easier by becoming the biker and just not being trespassing for the majority of the kill but of course the kill itself has to be uh, done in the trespassing if not hostile disguise in the biker compound so better watch out for that i assume you know what buta means uh, mu uh, in hungarian or i guess you guys know like <laughs> I, I could never call him that, like, maybe if we're a bit closer, but... It is Donny with still the big lead. But he's not... he cannot afford to lose cycles. Yeah, silly or stupid, but not in the harshest way. Just kind of playful, like not the worst thing to say, of course. But for Danny, it is a big, big moment. Gets gets the lure on Loventhal. Multiple shots there, and if he doesn't die because of the fires being too far away, oh now he's just passing again. He will be just passing, leaving the area, and no one's reacting. He has to get out. He will see some bushes. I think he can make a run for it. He doesn't want to. He wants to see those cycles. Goes for it, and that should be it. Oh yeah, he got he, he got the key. So it, this is definitely it. And so close for Yanini. Mm, I would say it's more than a minute. Uh, because of the, because this will just kill number four, of course, and then back to roll for the final kill, and we can see 5:45 right now. Just needs to get that last isolation on Montgomery, and yeah, <laughs> just think how this will end. Uh, we see the 30 second timer be done and Yanni wins the in-game time battle but basically one minute behind Dani will have to concede the Berlin map and Dani takes the lead six or seven to ten eleven but one fewer restarts at a crucial point uh, will mean Dani takes the first point and cannot lose the match now, of course. Which uh, will put him in a quite a good situation. We'll look at the standings after the second map. Dani is on three wins, three draws and two losses so far. So definitely not today will be his third loss. And sure, I can, I guess, uh, mention that Dani is four points behind the league leader, Fraud7, but with two fewer matches played. So, cannot take the lead right now, but he can be in a quite good situation compared to Fraud at least. But other threats are in the top three, which we will discuss later. New York next, Dani's pick. And I guess that's a good time to talk about the picks itself. Uh, I see just these nine picks for Dani. Those are nine different maps so far from all three seasons. Of course, Dartmoor, New York being featured there. 
uh, he's the Dartmoor record holder for for uh, Royal Tribals, so understandable there. A couple more from season three, Mendoza Chongqing, but he's not afraid to pick the longer maps as well, like San Fortuna and Colorado. But both of these players went all the way to the final in a World Championship, so there is just no way that they are influent in these eighteen maps. Eighteen maps for now. It will turn nineteen sooner rather than later. I think announcement is imminent there. Appreciate everyone showing up to this uh, non-Ambrose match. You know, it's very exciting day number two of the first map, first new map in Hitman 3's life cycle. Probably the only map, but still a great moment for the trilogy and the community. From one of the big fives to the bottom fives. New York is considered the second quickest map. So the tie is out of the question and if we see a first try there then we will know who wins the second map in less than five minutes after the spin is revealed. <laughs> not, not, not a me announcement, just reacting from chat message, but I think the Roulette League will make the announcement on how Ambrose, the Ambrose unlocks and the New Haven will be handled. Of course, that's important for the second half of the league. And yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm curious how much uh, uh, they, but they probably didn't prioritize the league at all. Both were in Ambrose for the most of the time. So interested to see how these players handle uh, these two spins. Uh, with um, not as much practice as one would probably uh, before a match. Well, in any case, this is the second spin no, the second match since Ambrose Island uh, is playable and so far of course no issues but the first time the loud SMG comes up it can cause discrepancies in the rules because what if one player does have the new one-handed loud SMG the other player doesn't I believe currently it's a hidden stash item but you can't start with it in your hand which is apparently a bug, it should be a bug and hopefully hot fixed sooner rather than later and of course should an eventual fire spin come up the Molotov cocktail spoiler alert the Molotov cocktail of Ambrose Island will be a game changer if the rules allow it here's the New York spin injected poisonous janitor for Athena Savas no secondary condition in the Ruet League Danny switching his starting location to janitor, his probably crowbar or secondary uh, uh, gear item to the injected poison and he's in already. Yanni hot on his heels, 30 seconds have passed and now both of them are on the map and going straight upstairs for that live kill on Athena. And Quick spins like this, even Athena's cycle might be a factor. Dani has the key card, Yanni has the key card. And with a bit of a lead, Dani will make his way to the office. But the question is can they do it first try? Three guards upstairs and one life kill to do. Don't want to target lockdown unless the doors are closed, which should be the case. Danny uses the Wi-Fi, which is important to say. But Danny gets the two KOs and keeps Athena in the room, aiming the gun at her, which means that she should stop and she will stop. She will duck now. And Danny gets the kill. Yanni with the second shank. Yanni will get the kill really soon as well, but Athena is stuck in the chair. Can 
he get the prompt there, he does. Still 15 or so be seconds behind Dunny at this point, who is now exiting the upstairs office. One out of three discs for Dunny. Yanni will also get his first one. And now just Matteo remaining. Dunny still with a 15 second or so lead. And he'll be likely ducking in this corner and waiting for that long range shot. A very important shot on a moving Matteo. But he hits it. And now it's just the run to the finish. From here any exit should count the same. Even main isn't too far away. But CEO it will be for Dunny. And a likely photo finish if Dunny. If Yanni. Oh my goodness. If Yanni can also hit his last trank shot. But PC versus PC that will not me make any difference. Dunny is out, let's say 16 seconds to go. Well, 27, 16 to go and we can just approximate the difference between the done finishes. Now it's 14 seconds, 16 and Yanni 17 seconds behind and apparently, oh yeah, Yanni pressing the button means the uh, the photo finish protocol has begun and I mean we'll calculate the photo finish and the loading times, the one loading time for each, but PC versus PC won't turn around those 16 or so seconds. I think I can check it as well in the matches tab. And if uh, Yanni were to forfeit his photo finish, then I can update the standings already. If not, then uh, we just keep it as is and uh, just let you know what how the standings would change. 18 seconds the lead for Dani and well first try versus first try probably won't change it and Jan is pretty sure he lost so that is a likely I guess not confirmed but a very likely 4-0 win for Dani ah now I'm checking, nine, nine minutes later, I guess it's important for the match itself before I change the scenes, that uh, Yanni threw an illegal item in Rolf's office and that caused the two NPCs to, to both be there. Yeah, which eventually cost him Berlin. So we can't uh, leave an official result. But I'll show you the standings as they are right now. And this is without today's match. Dunny was on 12 points uh, after 8 matches. He's likely to go up to 15 points, 1 point behind Throat. And uh, Yanni will stay on 7 after 9 matches. It's a 2 1 6 record. Uh, three, points, 3 points clear of North, both on 9 matches, both in an increasingly difficult spot as uh, they reach their halfway point of the campaign because of course everyone plays 18 matches in a full division and uh, someone was asking about I guess someone's asking about the uh, the bottom division bottom three there is no relegation battles out of the last division but the final placed finisher of division one will be relegated to division two and the eighth and ninth place finisher as you can see we'll play the promotion relegation playoff uh, against the second and third place finishers of uh, of Division 2 uh, of which I didn't set up the standings but we are also doing well uh, sadly it's just Division 4 which had uh, those four, four fits and dropouts so down to six players there Division 2 are on nine the other two still rocking with ten active players but lots more weeks to discuss these and definitely not the end of anything for anyone. Donny will be happy to be much closer to the top. And as we can see, Ducker and Pijero are the top threats for first place right now with the fewer matches that they have played. But uh, yeah, lots more will happen, of course, in the next days and weeks. So stay tuned for that. And thank you everyone for watching. GG to the players. And until next time, see you guys.